Hello, everybody. You know, April showers bring May flowers. What do May flowers bring? Well, at St. Paul's United Methodist Church, they don't bring either pilgrims or June bugs. Well, they may bring both. But they also bring spring and summer here. And our spring and summer is fun. Uh, we have all kinds of different opportunities for worship. We have all kinds of different ways that, that we go about doing our thing. If you wish to be a part of that, uh, we will still be online, but we also covet your response and, and your participation. If you want to come join us at 1505 South John Reddit Drive here in Lufkin, Texas, and we worship at 11 a.m., on Sundays. We're also going to be right here as we've always been. Uh, just be prepared for us to do some stuff maybe a little bit different as spring and summer comes along. If you wish to make a, uh, a donation, if you want to support us, because this ministry does come with a price tag, or if you want to send some comments, drop us a line, drop us a note to St. Paul's United Methodist Church, P.O. Box 921, Lufkin, Texas, and the zip code is 75902. We look forward to hearing from you. We will read your messages. We may not do anything, but we will read your messages. So I invite you to join us any way that you can for this spring and this summer. Go Fi Win. Amen.
this earth and fall on good ground, good ground. We don't want to waste your word. Rain down, rain down, heaven come and cover this earth. Fall on good ground, good ground. We don't want to waste your word. When your truth is Tater. Hey, Chip. What's wrong? Nothing. Then why are you so glum, chum? <laughs> I already answered you. It's nothing. Well, something is bothering you. But if you don't want to talk about it... How many it... times do I need to explain this? There is nothing going on. I hate it when nothing is going on. <laughs> Oh, so when you say nothing, you mean that that's what's bothering you, that nothing is going on. <laughs> How much clearer can I possibly be? There is not enough going on around here after Easter. It's almost like we get all worked up and motivated and then... Snooze. <laughs> I agree. As you should. However. What? Oh, I knew it. There is always a however, or a but, or a but when you think about it. <laughs> however, there doesn't have to be. Be a what? A letdown. A letdown on where? Here at church. Why are you a letdown? I mean, I mean after Easter. You noticed it too? I thought it was just me! We just had this conversation! You know what? Never mind. I never do. <laughs> it's easy to relax after Easter. There is so much happening during Lent and especially Holy Week. So, what are we supposed to do? Relax. What? <laughs> First of all, relax and enjoy the peace. But I'm so worked up! I have to do something! As you should. You should move as the Spirit moves you. That's what Easter's all about. I'm so confused. I'll alert the media. <laughs> but let's continue to stay engaged. Let's continue to pray and be aware of how Jesus is working. Let's continue to meet Continue to worship. Continue to invite others to come on this journey with us. In peace? In the peace that comes from Jesus. So let's pray. Everyone, bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Send us more of your spirit. Send us more of your spirit. So we can do the things. So we can do the things. That you want us to do. That you want us to do. Thank you for a wonderful Easter. Thank you for a wonderful Easter. And help us be an Easter people all year long. And help us be an Easter people all year long. Amen. Amen. This has easily been one of the most confusing skits we have ever done. When? What? Say goodbye, Tater. I think I already did. <laughs> did I? Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, open up our hearts, open up our minds. And help us learn. We ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Go fight, win. Amen. Uh, have you ever wondered how to live as Christ asked us to live? You know, that's kind of a trick question, isn't it? Because we all from time to time face these questions. So what is the answer? Well, here's a truth bomb. There is no one sentence from Scripture that can... Uh, we can use over and over and over, but there is good news. 
we do have several different parts of scripture that, that we can use. And we'll be going over one of these scriptures uh, in the next few weeks to see how we can use it in our personal lives, in our business lives, and in our spiritual lives. We'll be reading and discussing chapter 5 of Paul's letter to the Galatians. And this is commonly referred to as fruit of the Spirit passage. Notice I said fruit, singular. All of these taken together, and there are nine listed, make up one fruit. Today we'll be looking at verses 19 through 26 of the fifth chapter of Galatians. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness and orgies, and and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not be conceited, provoking, and envying each other. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, Paul is answering that question that we all ask. And he's doing it in a very first century Greek way. He's listing what things are and what they're not. He starts with the knots, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, okay. Hatred, discord, jealousy, mm, getting a little, little nutty there. Fits of rage, oh, now we're just meddling. Selfish ambition, are you serious? Dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Honestly, I, I really don't think any of us will debate uh, Paul for this, except for maybe the fits of rage. But we all know that these actions do not show God's love or, or God's grace to ourselves or to others, right? We're pretty clear on that. But the question is, do we do it? Do we show what we should show? Do we th do the things that we know we should be doing? And so we're going to look at the fruit of the Spirit, and we're going to start with the first three things that build that fruit, and they are love, joy, and peace. These are actually the building blocks of all of Jesus' teachings. And, of course, it all begins with love. Love. Paul is probably referring to the Greek word agape, you know, the Greeks had multiple different words for love. Agape, which meant universal. Eros, which was romantic. Philia, which was friendship. Remember, Philadelphia is literally the city of brotherly love. And that's why it's, that's why it's named. But Paul uses love, agape love, in most of his letters to the early churches because agape love is the love that God has for all of his creation. It is pure. It's selfless. And it's self-sacrificing. It always seeks what is best for others, even our enemies. And at all costs. You know, God shows his love for us in the sacrificing of his only son to save us from our own sinful nature. This is a major building block for our message of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It all starts with love. Then we talk about joy. The joy Paul is talking about is much more than a sense of happiness or gladness from, from life's circumstances. It's a profound delight and rejoicing that comes from knowing and serving God. You know, I get very happy. I get joyful when the teams I support win. I do. But it doesn't bring real joy like we're talking about here. It just makes me feel validated for supporting them. It just, it just gives me a warm feeling. When people I love have miracles happen in their lives, and it happens all the time, I feel joy. And what am I saying? It's not just people that I know and, I, and people that I like 
when miracles happen to anyone, and I found out, found out about them, joy. I sense that joy. Why do I show up week after week, day after day, to do God's service? Because this makes me happy? Well, usually it does. <laughs> but I show up because of the joy that I find when I serve God. Why do we feed the hungry? Joy. Why do we visit the sick? Joy. Why do we reach out to the needy? Is this for our own happiness? No. It's because of the joy God shares with us when we do as he commands. You know, that's something that I think that sometimes we kind of overlook. When we go out and actually do these things to other people, that joy comes to us and, and we are rewarded. Let's talk about peace. Does that mean quietness? Does that mean no conflict? Not always. Peace is the unshakable inner calm that can be a rare quality in turbulent times. Can I be honest? I used to claim that one of my best qualities was my ability to keep my head while others are losing theirs. That, that, that's a very British uh, Tudor expression. I used to think that I was exceptional at keeping peace. I used to believe that I was a great peacekeeper, that, that I could listen to each side, any side, see the faults in it, but not just see the faults, but see the things that they had that were true, see the truth in everybody. And that was really a tad prideful. And you know, pride is not listed as a fruit of the Spirit. But usually I, I do understand peace. Usually I am pretty good at calmly and rationally listening and understanding. But when I do lose that talent from time to time, I have to stop, breathe, and then let God into the situation. And you know what that means? That means that I give up control of what's going on. Ooh, we all know how we like to control things. We all know how we like to, uh, do not like to give up on that control. But sometimes for peace to come and to peace to happen, it needs to come where, from somebody besides us. You know, I don't do drama well. I don't. I find it, well, I find it very stressful. So I usually just don't play with the drama. But I have known people that absolutely live for drama. I think we all have. I think we've all seen that. And that is not seeking peace. That is not living as Christ acts. When we look at the list of don'ts and the list of the fruit, one thing always stands out. The don'ts are usually self-centered and the fruit is outwardly centered. The question to ask when we wonder about our actions, whether that they're fruitful, is, is this for me or is this for others? Is this self-centered or is this Christ-centered? Ouch, that really hurts. When I show love, is it just to those that, that I like? That's very self-centered. Or is it to human beings? All human beings, that's very Christ-centered. When I feel joy, is it just for me? Or is it for others? When I seek peace, is it to make me happy, the self-centered? Or is it to help all people as Christ did? Remember, I don't do drama. Is that so I don't have to get involved? Or is it so others don't affect my life? Maybe... I am the drama that I don't like. Here's the good news. We all usually know what is what, whether it's good or whether it's bad. But we have a difficult time doing the things that are outside of our comfort zone. And that's why Jesus is there. Jesus can and will help. All we have to do is to call and to trust, to let go of our inner control, and let God control the rest. Next week is forbearance, kindness, and goodness. I hope we can all join to grow in the fruitfulness of God. So join us then. Go fight win. Amen. 
That concludes our online worship experience here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. It's a little different. If you want to uh, worship with us in a live setting, we worship at 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Uh, we're located at 1505 South John Reddit Drive here in Lufkin, Texas. That's basically the South Loop and Hank Street. We would love for you to come and worship with us. If you want to send us an offering, uh, send it to P.O. Box 921 Lufkin, Texas. 75904. There is nothing too small or too large that we cannot use to uh, show Christ's love to our world. Until next time, go fight win. Amen. And recording is adjourned. Oh, I'm so sorry, Tater. You should say that. What? Meeting is adjourned. It is? No, you say that, Tater. What? Meeting is adjourned. It is? You know what? It is. Okay.